So doctor, where did you go to medical school? Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. So based on the intro, you can imagine where this episode is going. I'm gonna talk to you guys about my experience in the medical field and kind of touch on a couple of articles that I've been looking at. I've been reading a bunch of articles lately that have to do with medical schools and the subject of residency and getting into a lot of the social and personal issues that can come along with it. So in this video, we're gonna look at the way medical schools are ranked in the United States and rethinking that hierarchy. Interesting. There, it's nice. So I was looking at this article, rethinking the way we rank our medical schools. And one of the statements made in the article is a quotable that really stuck out to me. And it said, trust for my patients sometimes doesn't depend on my clinical judgment or even my bedside manner, but where I went to medical school. And that's a really damaging statement on our society. It just pretty much pigeonholes your perception of a doctor based on four years of their life, which of course are really four influential years on their medical training. It doesn't create a good doctor or a bad one. So there are a multitude of experiences that you're gonna to have to go through in order to train to be as excellent as you can be in your field. And residency is one of them, of course. So why is it that most people ask about medical school? So I've had a patient ask me this question. I would say it was probably between my first or second year of being an attending and as an anesthesiologist I expect many questions of this sort because as you may know we don't really meet our patients until the day of surgery usually minutes before we're taking care of them and putting them to sleep so you really have to look at it through those lenses of the patient who's really trying to get to know you so that they can instill their trust in you or not so I've been asked this question uh, many times but one specific incident I remember is when I was taking care of a patient and they asked and I responded with my medical school um, which is Meharry Medical College and the patient said where so after that of course I had to explain you know where the school is located and you know kind of give a little bit of history about the school it's a historically black institution my patient responded to me with a puzzled look on her face and then that got me thinking you know as I was talking to this patient and thankfully instilling more confidence in her that this is something that affects every doctor out there a patient looking for a doctor to take care of them is going to wonder where did they go to med school are they well trained did they learn enough to take care of me and naturally if it was you you would want your doctor to the, to be the best at what they're doing so what makes a doctor the best is it the medical school that they go to is it where they train for residency and what makes some schools perceived to be better than others so then as my conversation with the patient continued I got into discussing my residency training so then I mentioned to her that I trained at Cornell for residency. Her facial expression changed more to like, oh wow, wow, like a look of approval. And from that point on, she seemed to be much more comfortable with me, much more trusting of what uh, type of care I could provide for her. So this, this unfortunately affects almost every doctor, especially if you're young. There are gonna be questions about, you know, where did you go to medical school? What residency you trained at? And those questions though, they may make you feel a certain type of way are just the fact of the matter. People really want the best medical care that they can possibly get. And they're looking directly at where you went to medical school and where you did residency as a predictor of whether or not you're capable. So this is our reality, like it or not. This is the way people think. And it's actually a very damaging mentality. And looking at a medical school really doesn't predict whether or not, or even a residency, doesn't really predict how good of a doctor you are. As you may see in your classrooms and amongst your colleagues that are all attending the same institution, some are very strong, some are very bright, they're at the top of their class and others are not. But you're gonna be classified altogether based on where you attended, right? So the same thing occurs with the medical field. So in your day-to-day -day life, this is gonna be something that follows you throughout. Your colleagues are gonna judge you based upon that and it's gonna influence their perception of you throughout all of your activities. But it shouldn't, and it shouldn't define you as a physician. So what really gives schools their reputation? What makes a school top 10 or bottom 95th. It depends on a rank system that is based on a numerous number of factors, but most specifically 
the perception of peers, which is subjective, of course, and money, how much funding, how much research, how many grant dollars these schools get. So the US News and World Report comes up with the annual list of top 100 medical schools, and they go through all the schools in the country to come up with this list. So unfortunately, this can lead to the distorted perception that only good physicians can come from one of these schools. That's unfortunate because if we look further into it, you would see that the funding, the grant money that's coming in for research is usually funding research that doesn't only promote the betterment of patients. It can be research towards developing new pharmaceuticals or even other research projects that aren't specifically focused on the immediate more pressing issues. As was mentioned in this article, rethinking the way we rank medical schools, it was noted that the ranking of school usually reflects a school's highly specialized funding and capabilities, not the general quality of its medical school graduates. Other pressing issues, including the shortage of primary care physicians, lack of accessible health care and providers in certain areas of the country, and the disparity between racial and economic backgrounds of those who become doctors and those who are their patients are more pressing areas to look into. However, that's not always what's focused on and that's not always where this funding and grant money goes towards. So bringing it all back to what the point that I'm trying to make for you guys. So all of this built in this rank list is going to influence the perception other people have of you and your ability to be a good doctor. I want you guys to all know that even though you don't end up in one of these top highly ranked medical schools, that that does not determine whether or not you're going to be able to provide your patients with safe care. So though this is something that does affect the opinions of others, I don't want you to feel discouraged. So in this article, another great point was brought up and it said, it's time to re-examine that assumption. According to a study at George Washington University School of Medicine, many of the schools that were traditionally ranked highly were also among those least focused and least successful in addressing the most pressing issues facing the country right now. Although your medical school and your residency play a major role in how you're initially perceived by patients and your colleagues, it's up to you to take control of that perception and not let it define you. It's about your level of devotion, your work ethic, your track record of excellent patient care, and how much your passion for medicine and the quality care of patients takes you above and beyond your clinical responsibilities. That's what defines you. And with that, I thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you guys all the best in everything you're doing. Please stay safe. Thank Thank you so much for your comments and please like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video take care